抱着你的伤。El helendes te quiero as you try to see if the light will shine. Of the 1.5 million nonprofit organizations in the United States alone. Why did these artists volunteer their time and talent to this humanitarian relief initiative, spearheaded by composer-conductor Jim Papoulis and Foundation for Small Voices? The phrase "We will lift you up" it seemed like I mean to me a hope is a huge, a huge element of life, and people underprivileged people, people who are involved in disasters. They they seem to not have any hope, so they need something to help carry them to to lift them up. So it just seemed like a natural natural title. This is a wonderful opportunity for any artist and any songwriter to really make a difference in any way they can when it comes to world affairs and and tragedies. Unfortunately, tragedies are inevitable. There's an awful lot of uh, tragedy around the world. Well, Jim uh, called me up and. He asked me if I would sing on a song that he had written. It feels wonderful to be part of this. Music is, to me, is a very、uh, easy way to touch people. I thought of it as a great opportunity to sing for the children who have lost their parents and their siblings and their friends. Yeah, I'd like to see more awareness and hope and kindness. I think arts is like the the paint of the world, so. Right now, we need to put some color in that in that country that needs our help. Bravo! And music is a great way of reaching out, you know, giving love. It came together like a, a natural.、Um, let's just say everything fit like an unexpected glittering constellation. Stars aligned, and people just pitched in. The, the people who were. Lost in in the earthquake, it, it definitely takes you on an emotional ride because it could have been you. The idea of、um, doing doing one song in many different languages with many different choirs and people from all over the world、uh, is sort of a link. It just kind of links everyone immediately. The music for "We Will Lift You Up" was written by composer conductor Jim Papoulis, and the lyrics are by Jim Papoulis with Francisco Nunez, music director of the Young People's Chorus of New York. I pretty much express myself in the feeling and how I sing and how I, you know, express the song, you know. So it definitely had、um, it touched my heart, and hopefully, and I see that it's touching a lot of hearts all over the nation and all over the world with this song. He will lift you up. 100% of song sales are dedicated to humanitarian relief. We do lots of projects all over the world. Of course, people buy the song and hear it on the radio, and it will serve to raise public awareness. And hope wherever it's heard in the world. To be able to perform it with choirs in other in various different countries, we do some concerts and, and、uh, projects in cities that have had a natural disaster. It seems like a, a, a natural marriage there. I'm singing the song, and this song is going out to the world and it's helping other people. We did it with the Young People's Chorus. We performed it, and,、uh, and then the song sort of started evolving. We will lift you up. Is the first in a series of songs that were donated to raise money for the humanitarian relief song initiative, sponsored by New York-based Foundation for Small Voices.、Uh, fortunately, through my work、uh, with writing music, I have a, I can tap into basically any choir in the world. So I can go to you know Dallas or Afghanistan or, or Moscow or wherever, and there's just an immediate uh, uh, exposure there with people that I, that I maybe have. Uh, I've worked with, or that, that it's just so easy to immediately bring people together in a town. Chinese was the first language says something about the world today. So you know what? If they can do it, we can do it too. It seems that people of all ages, all over the world, love the music of composer conductor Jim Papoulis. This musical genius gives his all to young people. He seems to really have a knack to inspire boys and girls. To feel confidence from a, a fatherly voice and bring joy to those in crisis, so they can move on to evolve with their own peer group to make a difference in the lives of others. I mean, really, it's so wonderful what one composer can do to inspire children 
of all ages the world over, including young people right here in Boston. Uh, it can be a very universal idea. And I'll leave it to the maestro to tell you about the germination of We Will Lift You Up, his artistic process. Welcome to another edition of Dead Air Live. Tonight we have a special guest, Jim Papoulis, composer, conductor, and also co-founder of Foundation for Small Voices. Welcome, Jim. Welcome, thank you. Jim, tell us about Foundation for Small Voices in this humanitarian effort that you've been involved with. It's quite unique, mm -hmm. and I know that you have a lot to tell us. Well, uh, the Foundation for Small Voices is uh, something I started with uh, my wife 10 years ago, and uh, it focuses really on music and touching lives of children and everybody through music, but uh, based on really uh, people of need, and people who didn't have exposure to the arts, and that's how it began. Uh, and then uh, it was a natural evolution when uh, presented with this project, We Will Lift You Up. Uh, it seemed like a natural marriage, and that's how it sort of began together. What is We Will Lift You Up? That's a song. Yes. And if I'm correct, during the Haiti disaster, you mm -hmm. were given a call by CNN? That's right. With some, Tell us about well, that. Well, there were some producers who were pr producing a, uh, a concert and a f fundraiser for, for the Haiti uh, earthquake. And they said, um, you know, can you, do you have a song that you might be able to use? Or, and I said, well, what is the spirit of, I mean, I kind of knew what the spirit would be. Um, so I quickly, I was working with uh, Francisco Nunez, uh, uh, an associate of mine, and we, I was sort of coming up with the music, and then I said I would need some help with the lyrics, and it just, We Will Lift You Up, came as a natural title. We wrote it very quickly, then his choir learned it the next day at rehearsal. Then that night, at, we, we were actually went down on a subway in the, with the choir, because um, it was too, we had too many people. We were doing the event downtown, right? Uh, and we were all on the subway together, and we were learning the song on the subway with the sheet music. And they were rehearsing it, and we were rehearsing it, and then we got backstage, and we did it, and then we did the song, and Maurice came and sang the lead. And we did it at this concert event uh, just a few, a few hours, literally, after the song was done. It was pretty, pretty amazing. That's unbelievable. And you work a lot with the New York? Uh, Young People's Chorus Young of People's New York. Young People's Chorus yes. of New York. Which is very diverse cultural. Uh, you know, they, they represent about 50 or 60 countries. Um, so it was kind of a natural fit. Yeah. The song is beautiful, and it's very uplifting. Now, tell us about the creative process. It's sung now in... 35 languages? I believe so, yeah. 35 languages all around the world. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with the, you know, how did it all germinate? The words, I mean. Well, it seems that, um, I mean, you know, this, this natural uh, spirit of uh, wanting to be heard. And I see I work with a lot of underprivileged children. Right. And one of the most uh, common denominators that I see is uh, children that don't have hope and they don't feel like they're being heard and they don't feel like they're being listened to. So that, to me, it would also apply to uh, uh, people in need of, you know, in the earthquake. They're wondering, is anybody really out there? They have no communication. They don't know what's going on. Um, so it seemed like uh, the, the lyrics just kind of evolved. And, and whenever I do anything artistically, I mean, hopefully it's, you know, something that I kind of feel a spirit. I feel a human spirit uh, that can come out and it's sort of evolved together. And then I worked with Francisco and we, we did it together and, it, and the, it just came out. It just felt really good. Well, we can definitely feel your soul in this. And not just for people who are who children are people in relief that need help but mm -hmm. everybody needs hope mm -hmm. absolutely and the song when you hear it it just it does lift your spirits mm -hmm. so is there anything that you want to tell us about we will lift you up what is the what is the mission what is the goal well the main uh, the idea to do it with many different languages um, is uh, to me because there's so many countries. I mean, the world is becoming closer and closer together with communication and technology and all that. So, so it seemed like a. a what I found through doing projects with the Foundation for Small Voices is that people that are in a certain city, they want something to be benefited in that city. So a lot of times, but also everyone wants to help when there's something that happens in the world. Uh, all the barriers come down. The national barriers come down. The, right. the uh, you know, the political barriers come down, and people kind of tap into this human spirit of okay we're just going to help you it's like it's like you know it's like the red cross i mean it's like there's no 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 fighting happening i mean they just it comes down and people want to come together so i thought it would be natural to do it with many different languages singing the same song and then possibly mixing in uh, children's choirs from all over the world singing maybe the refrain in english but having them all represent their country it's beautiful and and we have 
We're going to look at a tape right now about Haiti, which is why this was all, okay. how this all came about. Okay. Foundation for Small Voices is a nonprofit 501c3 that's been active globally for about a decade. Its mission is to empower through music. It's really about listening and being heard, respecting what others wish to express, and asking questions that invite the inner child to open up like a flower and find his or her own voice. And thereby be empowered to move on and make a difference in the world. Hearing the song makes you feel so good. It's so beautiful. Um, of all the songs we could have chosen, we chose to begin the initiative using one song by Jim Papoulis because the lyrics of We Will Lift You Up are purely beautiful, uncomplicated by metaphors, so the composer's song translates well to every culture. We witnessed a veritable uh, groundswell of goodwill and artistic genius, and 35 languages coalesced over a short few, what was it, four months, five months, with over 100 volunteers worldwide who came together with a great deal of passion to translate, adapt lyrics, sing, record, provide studio space and to film, all donated. Um, artists and scholars and activists and corporate sponsors, everyone loves this concept. It just automatically resonated with everyone I floated it to. It was amazing. The first round we intend to be for Haiti Earthquake Relief through the Foundation for Small Voices and Management Sciences for Health here in Cambridge. Most of the language versions go to Haiti Relief. There are 35 different versions, different languages, uh, versions of the song. Sales from the Mandarin Chinese version will go to Tibet Earthquake Relief. The Urdu version goes to Pakistan's flood survivors. And Pashto and Dari versions go to girls' education charities in Afghanistan to expand girls' choices and options in life beyond the, you know, the hollow cliche of tribal elders who prey upon youths. Uh, but really it's about capacity building and sustainability. How did this begin? Um, initially, I intended it to begin with a 
beautiful melodic pop song. Um, it's a song I wrote for a beloved friend who was in crisis, but thankfully is no longer in trauma. Um, and it's a song full of metaphors, so it's hard to translate to other languages. Each of the 35 language versions is uniquely beautiful. I'll give you some examples. The French has an operatic sound. The Tagalog Philippine version has a Broadway sound. The Greek version has bouzouki. Another version sounds churchy. Another version sounds sweet. The Latin boys choir is sweet and schoolboyish. The Hungarian version is like a medieval ballad. Um, the Hindi version echoes of Bollywood and so on. I mean, each one has its own little indigenous sound. And each is a testament to taking the risk to get up and open your heart to hope. We Will Lift You Up is being done in many languages, and uh, to hear the flavor and the uh, artistic essence and understanding from many different cultures, to me, feels very unique to be able to hear it. It's a, it's a thrill for me to hear on top of my music, to be able to hear all these artists' interpretations in their various different languages, to feel the emotion coming through, even though it's a diff completely different language. To me, that is very thrilling, and, and hopefully it will have that sort of an effect on the people who hear it. So tell us about the different languages and, and all the translations. Yes, well, uh, obviously, I don't speak a lot of these languages. I speak some of them, but not, not most of them. Uh, so we need to have it translated, and then we also have to need, have a musician look at it to make sure the phrasing is correct. correct. Uh, so sometimes we have recorded it in New York, where I could be present. But uh, thanks to the internet, uh, we could, it could be recorded anywhere in the world. Um, and uploaded with a, with a you know, super high quality onto the internet and I download just the vocal into my studio in New York um, and then I mix it with a wonderful engineer, Brian Smith, who's actually from right around the corner from here. Oh, he is? He grew is. up about three miles away from the studio. No yep. kidding. Uh, and uh, so he's been mixing it together so we have hundreds of tracks literally with all the choirs and all the musicians and everything and then it says French and then you know and then it says Creole and then it says Spanish so we have it. it's really kind of exciting to see the the uh, the Pro Tools session but uh, so that's how it's done but it's fascinating to me to be able to do this over the internet um, and even now I'm having actually choirs record the uh, the refrain uh, in wherever they are and then upload just those vocals and then I can mix it into the track. And how did we find all these people around the world? Well through different contacts uh, through friends through people talking uh, recommending it and, and finding it and musicians know there's a big network of musicians throughout the it's world. It's just amazing. And, uh, and I, I work with a lot of I do a lot of choir music uh, in the world and and it's it's kind of a, a natural segue for me to be able to contact these choirs. Well we have a real treat we're gonna listen to Earth Man right now. Okay. Do the Creole version so if we can roll to that tape that would really be fantastic. As this first round focuses primarily on Haiti earthquake relief I would like to mention the Creole version with the Haitian American artist uh, whose stage name is Earthman. His real name is Richard Laurent. Earthman created what he calls a wall of sound using biosonic vocal techniques with dozens of layers of the same singer's voice, each layer creating a different tone ranging from a deeply resonant Tibetan monk's chant. <laughs> to a, a breathy kind of flutter, like the wings of a flurry of cherubim. Altogether, it's amplified by Jim Papoulis' gorgeous classical symphonic swells that will absolutely send you. Um, the sound engineer did the mixing with Avid Pro Tools that allows for complex layering of sounds, especially in the Creole version. It's a sound no one has heard and with which I believe everyone will fall deeply in love. Um, with Bose quality speakers you can appreciate the full spectrum of interesting textures and nuances in this song. Let us hear your voice, let us feel your prayers. We will build a bridge with our own. I don't want to play with silly music. 
We just heard Earthman. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, I heard about this guy Earthman. I mean, it seemed like naturally to do it in Creole. I mean, right. Because that's the you know the, the language in Haiti, and uh, I was wondering how that was possibly going to be done. I didn't know any Haitian artists, but uh, we were introduced. Uh, Earthman was introduced by one of the other artists who was involved, and uh, this guy named Earthman came into the studio. I was a little bit. Like his name was Earthman. I mean, I didn't, <laughs> it on. sounds like Spaceman. Yeah, no, I was <laughs> like, w what's he gonna look like? I had my, I was kind of scared a little bit, you know. But but he came in and he was the most incredibly centered, spiritual. I mean, the second I set eyes on him, uh, upon him, I just I knew he was gonna be amazing as an artist. And he uh, he did it. And what he what he does is uh, a lot of times in this in the Creole language and in the singing, they uh, they don't sing just one tone. They sing many, 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 many tones combined. Half tones? Yeah, they do half tones. They do many different tones. Usually it's three-part harmony. So he did about 12-part harmony and he doubled everything and it was just a very unique sound that he did. I was really, I learned a lot during that session. I just let him go. I just gave him tracks and let him record. He had told me he was going to bring his mother to the session who was helping him with some uh, some translation. I was right. really looking forward to that moment. Every time he came to the studio, I was saying, "Where is she?" But he's such a such a warm he has such a warm heart. It's so nice just for me as a person to be able to meet people with this kind of humanity. And, and as soon as you looked in his eyes, I mean, that's what life is all about, anyway. Right? Look what you're doing and how you have brought in all these volunteers. Gia, I know Gia has done a lot of work. Your uh -huh. executive producer. Uh -huh. The next clip we're going to be looking at is about the different continents all around the globe okay. and all the different volunteers. There's 
hundreds of them. And they're jumping. Everyone's jumping on this bandwagon because they all want to be a part of, of what you're doing. Okay. Everybody wants to help out all these people in need. Mm -hmm. So can we roll that tape? It was not until after the process ignited that we realized we had this fast expanding molten something, something that had not been done before. And like falling in love, it blossomed organically and suddenly all land masses, all populations are right here in our hands. The whole world is represented in our humanitarian relief song initiative. So yeah, to quantify our potential reach, uh, uh, we expect to reach all six and a half billion people on Earth. That is anyone near a radio or internet for sure. The Humanitarian Relief Song Initiative is about what makes people try. Um, I think hope, hope is what makes people try. It's about creating hope. Interestingly, uh, this project, this song, and other songs to follow that have been donated to the project, um, each will create hope in three different populations all over the world. And the three populations are music lovers, volunteers, and crisis survivors. Um, among music lovers, this gorgeous, uplifting song will lift spirits of those who buy the song or hear it on the radio. Secondly, the volunteers. The volunteers are really the stars of this show. The composer is a mind-blowing genius, and the song totally resonates. But really, it's the volunteers who make this project sing. Over 100 volunteers worldwide helped to pull this together. Each of those 100 volunteers wants to make a difference in the lives of crisis survivors for no pay, but simply for the satisfaction of doing good well. The third population that we reach, of course, is crisis survivors. The song creates hope twofold among crisis survivors, and one is by generating money, of course, to help survivors restart their lives. Also, when survivors hear the song on the radio, in their own language, in their own country, they'll know there are 100 volunteer strangers out here in the world who did this on their behalf. And, I don't know, maybe knowing that they're not alone will inspire them to keep going. You know, when, um, when someone expresses they care, you feel uplifted, you trust enough to hope again. Even if your circumstances are at their abject lowest, you get up and you get up and try again. When, when nothing is expressed or that trust you felt is broken, you fear the hurt of losing again. It might be like, I don't know, like the door to Oz slamming on Dorothy or like walking on a bog in dense fog. You can't see the next step. You, you may think you're just uh, working alone in a kind of vacuum. And so even a symbol of encouragement goes a long way to fire up your process toward hope and rebuilding. And we wish that. We wish that hope for everyone. And I think, I think everyone can relate to this on some level, don't you? Well, uh, to me, a, a project like this that can bring humans together on a, on a humanitarian level is a unique and amazing opportunity for me to be involved in and for any singer to be involved in and everyone feels the same way. And hopefully uh, a company would be able to feel that sort of power to be able to be the catalyst behind bringing this uh, effort to a much larger scale. It's as if we have 35 progeny fledging into the world, casting seeds of hope. It's like, um, I don't know, it's like a baby United Nations. And actually, it would be perfect as the theme song for the United Nations UNHCR because they don't have a theme song yet. As I gradually structured the overarching plan for the Humanitarian Relief Song Initiative, it became clear that from one song in many languages, we could exceed 120 revenue streams using iTunes in various download forms, like songs, of course, um, ringtones downloads, and music videos. Of course, DVDs of the documentary and all language versions of the DVD will be sold also. Um, YouTube is great for getting the word out there, of course, and Avid Pro Tools allows the sound engineer the flexibility to mix the English original with each foreign language version. 
and Jim Papoulis is creating a global village version of We Will Lift You Up, lacing all 35 languages together. What do we mean by humanitarian relief? Uh, natural disasters, as with earthquakes in Haiti and Tibet, the flood in Pakistan, um, the results of generations of war, as in Afghanistan. Capacity building and sustainability are essential for peace, for education, and rebuilding to happen. It's, you know, it's a simple equation. Humanitarian relief implies crisis among a population, a crisis that is not self-inflicted, but foisted upon the population by a dominant influence like Mother Nature, clashing governments. We will focus our efforts in order to keep traction, to raise public awareness and create tangible results. Uh, how is this a model for other nonprofits and schools? Um, this can be a model for other nonprofits and schools. I would say of the 1.5 million nonprofits in the United States alone, Foundation for Small Voices will be the first of many to collect revenues from this kind of uh, song sales model. Um, and in our case, Management Sciences for Health will be responsible for deploying the funds where relief is most needed in the world. It's a marvelous fundraising tool for any nonprofit organization or school wishing to model their own effort after our template. I'd be delighted if, if other nonprofits or schools can benefit by deploying our process. You know the old adage, um, teach them to fish and they'll eat for a lifetime. But if you fish for them, well, that's what dead end codependence, right? Jim Papoulis' prolific magic continues with children's choirs around the world through the Foundation for Small Voices, Small Voices Without Borders Empowerment Through Music program. So children's choirs can collaborate with each other through the Foundation for Small Voices to create their own um, like multinational version of We Will Lift You Up using ejamming.com. So they do this online. For example, Jim Papoulis initiated a four-continent ejamming.com version of the song for other choirs around the world to follow as a template. The guy's a genius. I mean, who thinks of this stuff, right? Um, Jim's four-continent ejamming.com model collaboration is with the Boston Children's Choir, Kenya Boys Choir, um, Israeli-Palestinian Children's Choir, and Beijing Children's Choir all together. So it's really a very cool way for young people all over the world to connect, to collaborate, make new friends, and make a difference in the world. Jim, we don't know a whole lot about you, but I know that you're going to tell us. And we have a wonderful clip to show that, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, okay. <laughs> I know that's really hard to do. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a tough question. <laughs> I but, put you on the spot. Okay, you did, but that's all right. <laughs> Um, well, basically, I'm a, a musician. I mean, I, 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 you know, I think that um, I remember when I first went into music, I, I felt the power of what music could, could do for me. I mean, I was a math major in college, and and, uh, and I, uh, I I came into music because I was just completely moved by what music could do to me right. and for me. And then and then I, I remember when I first started writing, I didn't suddenly I felt the power of what something like that can do, and it just it just moved me beyond what I had ever experienced before, and that's how it started. Um, and then I was doing music in, uh, in New York, and I was doing a lot of music for films and commercials and things like that. And then uh, when, when we started the foundation, um, I started, you know, realizing what the spirit of music could actually do for people um, and inspire people, and, and at least aspire to inspire people. Uh, so I started doing a lot of work with the children's choirs, and uh, I did some projects with the United Nations. And um, but I'm classically and jazz trained, but then I've s since developed and evolved into world music and funk and jazz and pop and people ask me what kind of music I do and I I don't really know what to say. I say I try to, you know, music that I feel. I don't know I don't know how to answer that and question. And you do a beautiful job. How did you get your first break? Uh, let me see. Oh, gosh. Were uh, you like 12 years old? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I came to, to New York and uh, I actually, when I graduated from, from graduate school, I went on a, a sort of a spiritual bicycle trip by myself. I just didn't speak for about 10 days. Um, really? Yeah, and then I called home, and I, my dad said that I had an interview at a company in New York. So I went in and interviewed, um, and they hired me on the spot. I actually started that day. How old were you? And, uh, I was just out of grad school. Okay. I was uh, 20, 
three, I guess. You were a baby. Yeah, you know, <laughs> 22 maybe, yeah, 23. Um, and, uh, and that's how, you know, so I wouldn't call that a big break, but I don't know, I mean, the breaks that you have, I don't know, I believe in big breaks so much, but, uh, you know, pr preparing and looking for an opportunity, I mean, I think that's what. You think that spiritual journey helped you? I think it helped me, yeah, but I, <laughs> I always like, you know, I think it was Vince Lombardi, the football coach, who said, oh, yeah. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity, which I love. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, and I've, I've always loved that. And I think if you just work as hard as you can in something and you really love it, that, you know, that things will happen. Okay, well, let's check out what you've been doing over the past uh, 40 years. Tell us about Foundation for Small Voices. Okay. Well, uh, it, it, it started uh, out as a, a, an idea that a bunch of us had in New York um, to, to somehow touch the lives of children through music. So we had a, a, a corporate sponsor was Hyatt International Hotels, and they, they signed on. And we had, a, a, I think, a six or seven city tour in China 
planned. We were going to Beijing and Shanghai, mm -hmm. and we had these wonderful events planned and fundraisers and everything. And then we were going to do a concert at the White House um, and that was going to kick it off right before we left. And it was, uh, we were going to do a concert on September 9th, 2001, uh, and leave on the 12th oh to go goodness. on this tour. So, um, so we, uh, I'm sorry, not, not, it, the, the, the weekend after September 11th, the Sunday after September 11th, we were going to do it. And then we were going to leave the, the week after that. So obviously everything changed on uh, September 11th. Right. Uh, so the, the tour was canceled. No one knew what was going on. And uh, so we said, okay, well, what are we going to do? To, uh, we could maybe, maybe I could go by myself and do some songwriting workshops and actually write songs with children. So it evolved into more of a songwriting. We, we have since done a number of concerts, but um, that whole idea in the beginning obviously was, was changed dramatically mm -hmm. on September 11th. I mean, it was literally a few days after that we were going to go. So, uh, so now I do uh, quite a bit of um, writing for, for youth choirs and choirs. Uh, and I, all the music that I write comes from the viewpoint of the child. Uh, it's not adults saying this is what it should be or this is how it's supposed to be. So it's very important uh, to me to spend as much time as I can with youth, to ask them to be in a room without any other adults, to ask them what they're worried about, what they're thinking about, what, they, what they're hoping for, what they're concerned about. And we try to find topics of uh, what they really want to express. And I ask them, well, what is it that you might want to express to the world or to your parents or to the you, you, older generation? So I try to I find out, listen to what they listen to. Uh, I, I ask them what they listen to. I hear about their artists. And then I go in and I do a, it's a three-day workshop normally. And I'll go and I'll sit with them and we'll write a song from scratch, blank page. Then I'll bring my portable recording studio and we'll record it. Um, and then they'll get CDs and everything. And then it, it's all part of... Uh, music and, and learning how to work together and learning how to share ideas together and it's been a fascinating process to me. So that's what uh, is a large part of uh, the work that I do now and I do a lot of, um, and, and that's all the proceeds go to the Foundation for Small Voices and we benefit uh, different organizations and um, uh, private music lessons and, and helping out with choirs and equipment and all kinds of things because so many programs are cut now in the arts. Music is uh, such an intangible you can't quantify it. They say, oh, well, we can, we can let, cut music away. But no. in fact, music is such an important part of a child's education, but uh, it's, you can't really quantify it. People say, well, you can't use music, so that's, not, that's something we're going to cut. And you see there's a lot of schools in New York City that have absolutely no music departments, so we're trying to work with a number of different choirs there. We do it through the Young People's Chorus of New York, and they also have a whole program, an outreach program, uh, where schools who have lost their funding. So that's, that's a large part of it, bringing the power and the essence of what music is to... to to as many people as we possibly can. That's sort of it in a nutshell. I've seen you, I have videotaped you with the kids, mm -hmm. and you just light up when you're around the children. It's almost as if you're a child yourself. Mm -hmm. And you just bring out, you empower all these kids to believe that they can do something great. They're writing a song with you. Mm -hmm. They're like, their input, they feel empowered because you make them feel so special and that is such a gift so thank you thank mm -hmm. you for doing that for the children when you were a child were you able to express yourself because no, you of course not no <laughs> no I mean maybe I, maybe I was but you know I, I, I think that uh, it's interesting because I go to many different parts of the world and of the United right. States, and I work with the poorest of the poor and the most privileged of the most privileged. Right. And and I try to ask. And there's a lot. There are a lot of common themes about what is going on in the. But an overall theme now that it, that is, is and it seems to shift every year or so. But right now it's it's really that that uh, society and parents and educators think that they're supposed to be a certain way and they're trying to sort of fit them into a box. Which box is that? Well, the box of being the responsible, normal, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but, mm -hmm. they, but to be able to find out who they're, you know, what is actually, who they actually really are. Mm -hmm. Some of their parents maybe don't even know who they are. So that, that seems to be a theme that they really like to explore. You know, people, oh, people think I should be a certain way or, you know, be in a box that I'm, that I'm supposed to squeeze into and, and I try to find out what it is that they, uh, they actually are and, and the exploration of that is a very common theme of many of the songs that I've written with them. And you do an incredible job with the kids. Y you inspire them to be better than they are. As a matter of fact, I can guarantee you that every kid that has the privilege to work with you is one of the highlights of their young life. That's how important it is what you're doing because you're bringing the gift of music. When you cut away music from someone, you're taking away their soul. Mm -hmm. 
you can live without the you can live without the light, but you cannot live without the sound. Mm -hmm. And I would love to go to the next clip, which is a very special moment of you with um, a young girl by the name of Amanda from the Boston Children's Chorus. Mm -hmm. And I was behind the camera, so you might hear me in the background. Okay. So if we can, yeah, if we can get that, that would really be fantastic. And uh, what you do to inspire the kids. Thank you so much for that gift. Okay, thank you. So tell me, so now what happened with Give Us Hope? Someone was doing something yeah, wrong? When I, yeah, I was singing the chorus to it, and a friend of mine named Joey Vasquez, he remixed it. He sounds like a remixer. Okay. Yeah, and he was rapping to it. Oh my God! And I'm telling. But you I mean told he was doing it with it with his just yeah. live, or was he did it to a beat? He did it to his own beat, and and I tell him, you never ruin a Jim Papoulis original. That is an original. You never ruin it. But that's not ruining it. That's just ex that's just exploring another world out of it, right? I mean, rapping to a Jim Papoulis tune, I don't think so. <laughs> and that was. Was he doing a beatbox to it, or he had like a beat that was going on? At, what, what, I don't quite understand. Or he, he was, was just a, like just rapping it. Yeah, he live. was rapping it. Okay. Do you do you know how to rap? No, I'm not a rapper. You're not a rapper. Okay. Good. All right. Well, that's cool. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed the song anyway. But but that's cool. That I think it's cool that he did that. I mean, why not? You know, I like to kind of explore those boundaries a little bit myself. So. You? I thought you would yell if I told you this. No, are you kidding? I, 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 uh, I'm doing a series of pieces for a symphony orchestra and four world percussionists doing like kind of beats over the top of it and combining. I, mean, I love that when things are combined. That's what makes things spicy. Well, if it it's okay great. with you, it's okay with it me. It is definitely okay with me. Well, I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you did it. Awesome. Get back. Um, the song is Give Us Hope and I did it at my talent show like last week. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. With what? With a pianist or? With a pianist. Good. And you did it as a solo? Yep. Wow. You did it in E flat? Uh, I just Great did it. Key. I just did it in my key. It's. Jim, after that whole event with the young girl, Amanda, she said to me, he changed my life forever. I'll never, ever, ever be the same. Oh. So she, you gave this young girl a special moment. How sweet is that? I mean, that's what, I don't know, that's the goal of any musician, I think. Well, any that's artist. the goal of Jim Papoulis, composer, conductor, extraordinaire. So Jim, we have a couple of minutes left. Tell us about your your mission, what you want to accomplish with everything that you're doing. You're still a very young man, and you have a lot left to do. So what's the big goal? What's the big picture? Well, uh, you know, um, I mean, I like where I'm going working with youth because youth turns into adults. and <laughs> So obviously, if I can inspire them in some way and just uh, let them experience what music is all about, mm -hmm. I want to try to continue writing music that is uh, heartfelt and also expands uh, creative boundaries of, of, of art a little bit and of music. Uh, I like fusing styles together. I like fusing classical and world and, and funk and something that uh, ma mainly, uh, you know, um, music that is fun to listen to and fun to play. Jim, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure, okay, my pleasure. having you here and uh, 
let's um, let's do this again okay. and bring you back because we have so much to accomplish. <laughs> As you try to see if the light will shine. So let's start from yeah. the course. Which kind of mic is this one? Which kind of mic is this one? It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. We're almost ready. There will be a number of cantants internationals who participate in the event. We are here for you, we're thinking of you, and if there is anything that we can do, even though we're all the way in America, we will. And we have not forgotten you. We will 